Well, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on the movie. Um, anything that takes me back to Ireland, I'm in. Um, I have to I have to start by telling you that my son is actually studying at UCD right now, uh, veterinary medicine. So we were lucky enough to take him there two years. He's already in third year. Uh, I fell in love with the country. I, I, I just couldn't see enough. So I can't wait to go back. So I do thank you for this film. And I wanted to ask you first off, of course, it's based on your wonderful stage play. When did you decide that you wanted to kind of turn it into a movie and, you know, adapt it this way? Well, uh, a, a woman who had produced a lot of my early plays, Leslie or Dang, went to see uh, my play Outside Mullingar, which this film is based on, uh, and uh, called me afterwards and said, you know, I think this should be a film. Yeah. And uh, for me, that was uh, an easy call because uh, I thought, well, you know, here we are in Manhattan making believe we're in Ireland. Yeah. Why not go to Ireland and shoot that incredibly breathtaking scenery and the farms and the animals uh, and the interrelationship between the environment and the people. And yeah. so uh, it just seemed like an organic thing to do. Yeah, and I, you know, it's like I said, you go to Ireland and there's not a lo there's just not a location that you couldn't shoot in. Every single area, place there is gorgeous. How hard was it for you to find this specific location? Because again, stunning, just stunning. Well, you know, I had location scouts over there before I went uh, and I gave them a very simple direction. I said, find me the most beautiful farm in Ireland and the most beautiful mountain. Yeah. Uh, and they found the two together in one wow. location in County Mayo. Uh, and so uh, I saw the photographs of that and of many other places. And it just, those leapt out as this is exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, just perfect. I, you know what, if I were in this cast, I wouldn't have left. I would have like, just, that's it, you can't send me home. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think so, you know, Jamie Dornan lives there. Yes. Uh, and Dervila Malloy is from there and lives in, I think, London now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but both John Hamm and Chris Walken had never been there. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. Yeah. With, with their constant traveling that they never went to Ireland. But we, uh, you know, addressed that shortcoming in them, and now they have. And now they're addicted, and they need to go back. I get yep. it. I totally, totally understand that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the casting. You mentioned John and Christopher, but let's let's obviously start with Emily and Jamie. Uh, first of all, Emily, who doesn't love Emily Blunt? I mean, seriously, one of the nicest gals around. She's so talented. She can sing. She can act. She's just lovely. She's humble. What did you see in her that I probably just didn't mention that you thought would be perfect for the cat for her character? Well, I mean, you, you know, I started with Jamie Dornan because I was looking for a dark, brooding, uh, romantic lead, and if possible, also Irish, and that you know really nar narrows it down <laughs> basically to Jamie. Yeah. Uh, so, but after I cast him. Uh, I, uh, when I looked down the list of actresses that I might be able to get, I actually never thought I'd be able to get Emily. She was one of the uh, biggest, I think she was the biggest female box office star of, of the year yeah. uh, when I went to her, uh, both for A Quiet Place uh, and Mary Poppins Returns. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, to my astonishment, uh, she said yes, like two days after she was sent the script. Uh, I wanted her because she basically can do anything. She's a trained musician, which means that she's going to be very good at accents because she has a very good ear. Yes. Uh, and I also thought that uh, she had the kind of uh, in intellectual equality with Jamie. They're both very, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. people that don't flaunt it, but it's there. Yes. Uh, and I just had the instinct that they would relate really well to each other, which it turns out they did. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's funny to watch Jamie Dornan in this. Of course, you know, all the ladies love him from, you know, his mm -hmm. Stevie movies. Um, yep. I loved watching him be this kind of weirdo, basically. You know, he was like a fumbling, you know, it, 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 I, what drew me so much to these characters was here are these two people who've grown up together, 
she's had this crush on him her whole life, you know, as a little girl. He probably liked her a lot too, but he just didn't know how to deal with these feelings, you know. And he he was just so nervous around her. And, and, and I just, I love that because the relationship grew. And, and just talk to me a little bit about writing these characters and where it's, where they stem from. Well, my, uh, my father is an, uh, was an Irish immigrant, came to this country when he was 24 and he was born and raised on a farm in central Ireland. Yeah. Uh, and that farm actually is still in my family. Uh, and so when he got older, he used to go back every year. When he got older, he uh, enlisted me to be his driver. Oh. And so I would go back with him. And that's when I met the family and stayed on the farm. And with the exception of one trip, every time I went to Ireland, I just went directly to the farm and never went anywhere else. Because I found my family members who I had not known before that mm. to be intoxicating in their individuality and their unique way of expressing themselves. And the, that was so uh, convoluted and yet completely understandable and really funny and really deep mm -hmm. uh, and, and pure poetry. So uh, uh, my head was full of them every time I left. Mm -hmm. And it was only a matter of time before I wrote about them. Amazing. And then Christopher Walken, who of course is not Irish. Um, what, what a joy to have had him on the set, I'm sure. What was it like to work with him? Well, you know, it's sort of like having some kind of sacred animal. Uh, you know, everybody, you know, because I mean, everybody feels this way about Chris Walken. Yeah. So the, the cast, you know, who are, uh, have, you know, pretty impressive credits themselves. They yeah. all just, when Chris would walk in the room, it was a different room. Uh, and uh, he let me know that it was very difficult for him uh, if he could see me, that uh, he would be influenced by the fact that I was there and it would change what he was doing. So for the first three days we shot, I shot from a closet. I stayed in a closet so Chris couldn't see my face wow. while he was acting. Uh, and after three days I came out. And yeah. Yeah. It was a nice feeling. <laughs> it was time to come out of the closet, John. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and I wonder, I forgot to ask you, but did, did uh, Jamie and, and Emily, like, did they have that instant chemistry, but because they have to kind of butt heads a little bit or be hesitant with each other, how did, how did that work? Uh, well, Jamie kind of is, has an awkward energy. Uh, and he's always muttering under his breath really funny things that at first you don't realize are jokes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, and that's kind of his way of dealing with everything. Yeah. Uh, he's, and he's incredibly sweet as a person. I once uh, sat down in my director's chair and it was on soft turf and it, the legs sank in and I just pitched straight backwards over. And it was a, in a night shoot, you know? Yeah. And yeah. before I hit the ground, Jamie was under me and caught me and was so solicitous uh, and um, just right there as a person, it was, it was kind of great. Yeah, and John Hamm too. I mean, he, he could have been, you know, a character that we really didn't like, you know, because we want Jamie and Emily's characters to get together. But he's not. He kind of yeah. propels them to get together. And I like that. I like that John took this role. I, I mean, you know, I think that's why John took the role. Yeah. Uh, he said as much to me that uh, if it had been, you know, some kind of traditional heavy, yeah. uh, that, that, and, you know, the thing is that I don't write villains. Yeah, you uh, don't, I, yeah, yeah. It's actually really hard for me to find a villain. Huh. The world is filled with fools and heroes, but it, a villain is one of the most difficult things to track down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, not a, a terrible a source of interest to me once I, if I do track one of them down. Uh, most people are, you know, doing the best they can or they're fighting for their lives. In their opinion, you know, the reason they're doing the things they're doing is to survive. Yeah. Uh, as we've all been reminded, life is very challenging and it's hard to survive. So even the most uh, um, off-putting people uh, they have a point of view, and uh, 
I'm, I'm very sensitive to that. Yeah. I like people. No, and it's awesome. And you can see that in your writing. There's no question about it. Um, and, and the thing about this movie too, like uh, even to the very last scene, I defy anybody not to have a huge smile on their face when they watch that closing scene. Like I just was, well, of course in tears, you know, but how lovely. Like, thank you for, for giving us this uplifting movie. I just love it so much. <laughs> Really? Um, I'm, I'm really glad you do. You know, it's very funny. Uh, you know, we had a whole, a whole Irish crew and they couldn't get over that we had brought rain machines to County Mayo. <laughs> they, just, just, they couldn't get past that at all. They thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard in their lives. Uh, and but by God, we use those rain yeah. machines. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Lastly, just before we wrap, I have to I'd be as a Canadian, it would be awful for me not to mention Moonstruck, of course, because Norman Jewison. I mean, really, it was so many years, and and the accolades and awards you've won, and for that, and oh God, what a what an amazing, amazing film. Give me one of your best memories working with Norman Jewison. I think it probably the best memory was the first time that I met him, which was, uh, I went up to Toronto uh, and uh, went to his office. And uh, after a little preliminary chat, he and I divvied up all the roles in Moonstruck and acted out the whole thing together. And wow. so, you know, the first day that I met Norman, we played a big love scene. <laughs> Is there any footage of that? <laughs> And, you know, Norman being somebody who's very sensitive to the power of film, made sure there is no footage of that. <laughs> but he was, a prince, he was oh. a prince of the men and he, uh, it, it was a pleasure to work with him yeah. and a, a very happy experience. Yeah, yeah. And also very quickly, I, I, well, I got you here because I have to ask you, when you, you know, when doubt was made and everything, and then you look at, I mean, we all know Meryl Streep, you know, she could read the phone book and I've watched that movie, no problem. But Viola Davis, you know, look at her now. My God, that woman, like, seriously. Well, she's a powerhouse. And, you know, when I uh, I'd gotten down to uh, like five possible people to play that role, uh, we did uh, camera tests with them. Uh, and uh, I had, so I had a little mini camera crew and one by one, these sensational actresses, the greatest black actresses of our time, came in and did this scene. And every one of them was spectacular. Yeah. But I noticed that when Viola did the scene, the whole crew stopped moving. They just froze and they stopped breathing. And I thought, well, that's it. That's our part. Yeah. She's amazing. She really is. Yeah. Her, her, I don't know if you've seen her in Ma Rainey, uh, another Oscar nod. Not movie. yet, not yet. I'm oh, looking forward to it. Fantastic. Film. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time today, John. I'm My such pleasure. a big fan. And this movie is just absolutely wonderful. I can't say enough about it. And uh, thank you. Yeah, and I just want to wish you happy holidays. Stay safe and stay healthy. And the same to you. Thank you so much. And uh, have a good rest of your day today. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye, Bonnie. Bye-bye. <laughs>